Hi and welcome back to Briar Society. So today, um, following a request from one of you, we have put together a video on basically a wedding 101. So what are the basics, the bare bones of what you need to get married and what you need to know to get married. So no frills, no like magicians or <laughs> clowns or <laughs> helicopters or anything. Like what are just the bare basics of what needs to happen for you to get legally married in the UK. So obviously just the proviso at the start of this, so this information is all correct as of February 2018. Um, so obviously it's subject to change, particularly like in terms of same-sex marriages and that kind of thing, because that's sort of a, a, a changing topic yeah. um, in, in law as we speak. So yeah, just bear that in mind and obviously refer to the government website, which um, we'll link below as well. But all that said, so first things first, you need to be legally free to get married. So that means that you're not already married, um, that you are legally divorced and you have a divorce certificate that you can present if you're in that scenario, um, and that you must be 16 years of age or older, obviously. Um, but yeah, if you are 16 or 17, you need parental consent um, for that, otherwise 18 and over and you can do what the heck you like, <laughs> but get married. Basically. So in terms of the actual legally binding ceremony, um, you need two witnesses and these could be anybody. I mean you read about these elopements where you grab a couple of people off the street just to witness the marriage. Um, they yeah, also, as long as they're adults yes, and understand yeah. the language that it's being conducted yeah. in. Um, I mean generally you'd know the people attending your wedding but you only need two. And you need to give 28 no days notice of your intention to marry. So if uh, you're getting married in like a registry office or in a civil ceremony, you'd go to the, your local well, Regis registry yeah, office yeah, at least 28 days before um, to say we want to get married. Um, and there are some procedural, procedural? <laughs> procedural things um, that you'd have to do. You have to have interviews um, with a member of staff there in order to make sure that you're both free, able to get married, and that it's also... You're not being coerced. Yes, and yeah. Uh, and in order to um, give notice of your intention to marry, you have to live in that area at least seven days. And I should say as well, you give notice in the area that you're living in, not necessarily the area yeah. that you're necessarily intending to marry. After you've given notice, in England, um, Wales and Northern Ireland, you have to get married within a year of giving that notice. In Scotland, it's three months, so there's only a three month window to get you out together. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there is a cost to giving notice, so at the moment it's £35 each um, that you'd have to pay in order to kind of give notice of the marriage. So things work slightly differently if you're having a religious ceremony. So if you're having an Anglican uh, church wedding, you don't usually have to give notice, you just have to like because the um, official doing the ceremony will do that for you and they will register your wedding as well so you don't actually have to deal with that side of it but you do obviously have to let the official know that you're getting married there and have that conversation there's a whole they have a whole set of rules around this as well in terms of that you have to have some connection to that church and blah 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 and um, and they will have a slightly different process in that they will read your bands of marriage within that church for like a four month period um, in the run up to your wedding as well so both that and the giving notice act as a as a chance for people to raise objections or concerns and say that person's already married or this that and the other <laughs> make, make sure it's all okay so that that's why that process is there but as I say they have a, a slightly different different process if you're having a non-anglican religious ceremony you will ha probably have to um what's the word give notice thank you <laughs> <laughs> trying not to get registered and notice mixed up yeah so you have to go and make the formal giving notice process yourself but you still don't have to do the registering process your efficient will do that for you so yeah so i think you know, basically like just once you've decided where you're getting married make sure you have a very clear conversation with the 
person conducting who will be conducting the ceremony just so you definitely all on the same page because I appreciate there's a lot of technicalities there so yeah just just make sure you've got it right <laughs> at that point so with civil ceremonies again if you are getting married at a registry office and um, there's a cost to then make the marriage official in terms of registering so this is after the wedding you're registering your marriage um, and at the moment that's £46 and then plus £4 for your marriage certificate so you've got the piece of paper to prove um, to everybody that you're married. Yeah. Um, so that bit where you, yeah. you take pictures of the couple signing, that's them yeah. signing the registry, so that, that's, that's that bit that's happening. Now if you're getting married at another venue but done by a registrar, um, there's other costs involved so it often costs yeah. more for them to come out to your venue. Yeah, significantly. Yeah. Yeah. The price depends on the day of the week you're getting married, so yes. certain days are a lot more expensive than others. That's true. And where, like, that cost will vary yeah. massively from council to council. Yeah. So in terms of if you're having a civil ceremony, basically there's some, there's some things you need to know around that. It's that you can't have anything religious. So, so if you're thinking maybe one of you is religious and one of you isn't, and you've lent towards having maybe a civil ceremony, you do need to know that you can't have any reference to anything to do with religion. So not in, you can still have like songs and readings, but they just have no religious content. What you can do, if you're in maybe that scenario that I've just described, is that after the civil ceremony is ended, you can then have a blessing following it, so you kind of get a bit of both. And in terms of vows, so within the civil ceremony there are some, there is some formal wording that you have to have in there for it to be legally binding. Um, that there is some choice within there in terms of the actual wording, but the sentiment is it's fixed. Um, but you can, if you want to write your own vows, you can still add them on and, and have that as well. But you do have some some fixed. Yeah, I remember we were sent, I think, two different options for the ceremony with slightly different wording. Um, but again, it's kind of it was either either or. You couldn't just make your own up. Yeah, it's things like the difference between like man and wife or husband and wife kind of thing, like those slight differences. An honour and obey. Uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> could be removed, so yeah. yeah. Um, so there are only certain places you can actually get legally married. Uh, you can have ceremonies elsewhere but they won't be a legal marriage. Mm. Either the registry office um, is for a civil ceremony or a venue approved by the local council um, where you can have a civil ceremony conducted by a registrar but isn't the registry office. And then um, religious buildings that have been approved by the local authority um, and the organisation, like the religious organisation. Yeah, yeah. And they'll, so they'll always be like a fixed permanent structure that has yeah. this licence. So I know like, about, like when you see marriages on TV like on the beaches or or this, in this country, like that's that's not allowed at this point in time. <laughs> so yeah, just bear that in mind. There are still some differences if you're a same-sex couple looking to get um, married or have a civil partnership. Um, so currently, as it stands, you can have a civil partnership in uh, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. For a marriage, for a civil marriage, um, you can have England, Scotland or Wales at the moment. Um, so you can't currently marry in an Anglican church, but you can marry in other um, religious uh, buildings as long as it's approved by that religious organisation and is registered uh, to conduct same-sex marriages. The other thing is if you're having a civil partnership is in terms of the formal wording that we were talking about in the vows for the um, in a civil wedding, um, you don't actually have to have any of that formal wording. You can, you can have it in there but you also you have complete free reign so yeah you can, you can Say and promise whatever you like. So yeah, so was that all our 
I point. think we've covered everything for now. I'm sure yeah. we'll... Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of other things. And as I say, like for church weddings as well. And the, yeah, there is, a, there is a lot there. But they're the bare bones and the, and the minimum costs in terms of what gets you from not married to marry. <laughs> so if you're just looking for a really straightforward job or just like, as I said, the legal bare bones of it. Um, so just to reiterate, this is only correct in terms of February 2018. Um, do check out the government website, as I mentioned before, which will link below, which will obviously have the most up-to-date information for weddings in the UK. Um, again, a board has a whole other, <laughs> whole other, <laughs> set, whole other video. A whole other set of things. So, yeah. So thank you for joining us. We hope you found that helpful and informative. Um, do hit subscribe. So send all, all our other videos as they come out. And yeah, and have a look around and check out what else we've got for you.